Welcome back to the LCO, delivered by these guys. These guys, menu log, if you can't read. Look, that's unfortunate, but at the same time, it's menu log meal time, and I have a question to ask all you guys at home. Do you like free stuff? Do you I like do. winning I free do. menu log vouchers? I want a free menu log voucher, Mac. How can I get it? Do you know, do you know what you have to type in chat? I think so, but it is a menu pog, sir. It is menu pog, kitty. I mean, carbon. Uh, menu pogs in the chat. You can win yourself one of those $30 menu pog vouchers Wait. or menu log vouchers. Who can do the best pog face? No, no, no. That's coming up. I need to, need to you know, make sure you get them in now. You just know that you have a good pog face. So you <laughs> Let it sit. Menu pog. Pipe it. Here's your YouTube thumbnail. Thank you very much. Mac, you have to turn side on. More. <laughs> so, a man that good? really got something to say but doesn't know how to start the word <laughs> have you taken the photo yet <laughs> i've seen the flash go off take it take it <laughs> did i do good skimmy skimmo of course mate sorry yeah beautiful okay. now look uh look that's it you guys 30 dollars voucher <laughs> hopefully one of you's won it hopefully you got yourself something good <laughs> yes um, i love this production team yeah that was that was great how they they slid that graphic in right um real good now, uh, look, quickly, before we finish menu log meal time, of course, I've got to talk a little bit of food. I'm kind of hungry, kind of want dessert, but it has to be porridge related. <gasps> oh, We're doing breakfast yeah. for dinner. Breakfast for dinner. Breakfast for dinner. I if have you had a, to eat breakfast banger. for dinner, what are we eating? I have a banger. I don't know if it yeah. counts as porridge. Do you guys know the Chinese porridge called century duck egg porridge? Where, okay, so there's this like forbidden egg which is the black duck egg okay surely rusty knows it sounds like a quest <laughs> <laughs> the forbidden quest the, the yes. black duck egg how in depth that is this you food? um obtain <laughs> for your final quest of your mission and you cut it traps. up with little pieces of pork and then you cook it up in a porridge and it's really nice when you're sick which is what i had for mm. like two weeks. i have that every day and that's my answer too but at the same time that's it for menu log meal time we're gonna start talking shop start talking about the games good. Okay. What? Okay. Peace. Come on, Rusty. Let's Come on, talk about what are peace. We, why are we... Thumbs up. Oh, say Rusty, it. just, just go it. with the crew, oh, man. Look, it. they all do it. They all fold their arms. Appy folded his <laughs> first, and they're like, hey, that's a cool pose. We're all going to do it too. Now tell me, Rusty, why peace are in it to win it today? I feel like mechanically when people fold their arms for photos, they should try not to have their hands involved in the shot because you want to like be able to puff up the biceps instead. So I just thought that's important. <coughs> Violet's back. Violet, <laughs> Violet clearly failing that, which is why I bring it up because yep. uh, his hands were visible. But oh. good to have Violet back. Uh, obviously, we've had Chayon for the past couple of weeks, and in terms of performance, Chayon's actually been quite good. Uh, so in terms of replacing him or, or bringing Violet back, we're not sure exactly what to expect from them, but whenever Violet's playing, safe to say high hopes. Safe to say, indeed. Well, speaking of high hopes, Chiefs, they don't even need high hopes because they just win anyway. This roster skimmy, they're pretty damn good, aren't they? They are very good at the League of Legends. Uh, I tell you that much. We've watched them play uh, 11 games and just 11 big meaty dubs. So the question really does become, uh, yeah, when can these teams look to try and challenge them? Is it going to be a case of them just completely stomping all these best of ones like they did in the split one and only really starting to find their test in the playoff games? Um, is history going to repeat itself? Or, yeah, are some of these teams going to really answer back and, and sort of give them some room to uh, to think about? Because that's really been a concern, right, when we have spoken to the players, to the coaching staff. How do you, do you stay humble? How do you try and improve? How do you keep the baseline above that of, of your opposition? Mm. You know, how do you continue to win against your direct uh, opponents in what? Like, always under 25 minutes. It's, it's crazy just how good they are. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it against Chiefs that quickly today because, I mean, against Peace rather that quickly because Peace... Uh, they have been looking better, but it's also going to be a big form check today for Violet, right? Because Chaon's been doing a good job, but Violet's back in the mix. So, well, on paper, Violet just has insane stats. Chaon's have been going up as well, but at the same time, we get to see how Guncrab and Violet function again down in that bot lane after a whole week and a half off now. 
I feel like Api and Tally actually have really similar uh, playstyle slash champion pool. You do see both of them picking the Azir, maybe even the Swain sometimes. They have both kind of uh, gone towards that utility mid lane where they do want to play for their ADC player or even just any carry player on their team. Mm. And they're not the main stars. But I think Chiefs just does it a little bit better because Tally's kind of known for that for years. He's just... He's perfected that way already, where Api's kind of just like still trying to figure out the best medium in between. Yeah. So, I don't know yet. He's been going all right. Last week he had some pretty good games himself, and Lisa really starting to find his feet. But the, the thing is, you're looking at the Chiefs members, and it's kind of like last game where you're trying to like compare the pair, and it's really hard to, you know, say the weak points for Chiefs, right? Because yeah. everyone's just been doing so well. It's also hard to say, like, is this really a test for Violet when Chiefs are so aggressive? It's more of a test for mid jungle, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the, the way the Chiefs have played is that they've doubled down on just being aggressive early game. So, mm -hmm. if you want to take it to them, you have to be able to match them early or yeah. find a, a, a tangible way to actually still have a win condition after they just destroy the map. I've just come up with my perfect question for Tally in the interview. We've got oh. the big man here, but Tally, I need you to tell everyone because no one seems to know the answer. How do you beat the Chiefs? <laughs> Uh, mm, that's, a, that's actually a good question. I think <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to come back to me later on that one. It's a bit yeah. it's, it's tough. After the split? Yeah, yeah, after yeah. The split. Okay, cool. Thank you. After the split. Yeah. And we, I also need an answer to this question because it's a hot debate between me and Rusty where we were discussing who the best mid laner is. So other than yourself, of course, who is the best mid laner in LCO currently? I mean, I think I, I already answered this, but I think it's definitely Yuri. And like, once again, I think he's really good when he doesn't play Troll Champions, but they are still doing that. So we'll have to see if they like want to stick to more like meta, like forming champions and like more consistent stuff. Now, I've got a little little question about big man up top there to Poon. He seems very quietly spoken, like on the normal occasion. Is he, is he like that in game? Does he say much? Does he just, you know, live in top and sort of do his own thing for the whole game? Or does he have a voice in the what's going on? Uh, I would say Jun's definitely like his soft-spoken person, but it's mainly because like the other four of us are very vocal. So there's not really much like he has to say. Like he just has to do his job, and like he's been doing that really well for us. Yeah, true. And being the only team that hasn't dropped a single game this split yet, and coming out of Super Week, who do you think is a team to watch out for, and who do you think uh, improved the most out of Super Week? Uh, okay, okay, so two, two answers. I'd say the most improved team from Super Week, I would say it's definitely Kanga. I was surprised by like how well they were doing. And it's like it's a good job that they picked up a couple wins. But I would say the team to watch out for is definitely Peace. Because the last time, uh, like a Peace player took a break and came back, they went to Worlds. So Violet has his break buff, so I'm looking out for that. Okay, well, good luck with that, trying to wrangle Violet today. Uh, I wish you well, and we'll let you go get ready for the game, Tally. Thank you very much. Why? Why? Two hands. He did the thing. He did the. He did the. You know, I'm funny animation in the interview and smile. Tally's great. Yeah, he's the king. He's good. He's been around since 2015 as well. Yeah, as a, as a pro player. So amazing that he's actually got the media training. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Hey. I just liked your answer. Isn't so it much, good? Though. How do you beat the Chiefs? It's just like, oh, just another expansion and a different type of game just to completely distract him from playing League. I just, I just wanted to see answer. where he'd go with it, but he did go there. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't know right now. Um, <laughs> How honest when, is he going to be? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just be like, this is our weak point. Please abuse us in the bot lane. Once you beat Raze, then you'll beat all of us. Beautiful. <laughs> now, nah, look, uh, look, we got to talk about Dare Fan Vote. Get your Twitch points in for this game. Tell us how you think it's going to go. I'm still expecting it to be very, very heavily Chiefs favored for now. But he did mention, you know, that Violet, you know, couple of weeks off mm -hmm. buff coming back. So maybe, just maybe, there's a chance for Peace to be well rested. He today. would know firsthand, right? Because he was part of that roster with Violet. So they all took a bit of a break, came yeah. in the fifth seed, uh, and it went the entire gauntlet run to Worlds. So uh, no doubt he can show a lot of respect to some old teammates. Exactly, exactly. Now let's have a look at how we think this game's going to go. Are we all Chiefs? We're all Shields. Uh, we're all on the same page. So no one thinks today's the day. Nah, I mean, yeah. like, with all respect to Peace, yeah. even if it's their day, the Chiefs are still better, yep. you know? <laughs> like, Track like, record, everything. Yeah. Yep. Also, Team. there's a lot of motivators for the Chiefs, right? Like, Aladoric against Violet does have that, like, that little subconscious battle between the two of them, mm -hmm. so yeah, true. there's going to be that extra flair there. Ooh. Yeah, a little storyline, of course, you know, they did... Uh, 
they did succeed together, but now, of course, Aladoric's not there anymore. So, uh, how do you see this one going, Kitty? If Peace have a chance, I've asked Skimmy to, you know, spin up a couple of storylines, have a yarn with me. Mm -hmm. But if Peace win today, how's it going to happen? And who are we watching? How's it going to happen? Okay, so Lisa is actually going to be useful on Lisa today. Oh, okay. And that is going to be revolutionary because Arthur plays Lisa, so he's going to be like, oh my god, what do I pick? And he locks in Udyr. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And someone unplugs the Chief's internet. I will go unplug the Chief's internet. Hey, 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 hey. Kick the box. I mean, that's a viable way to win. I'm just saving your <laughs> career, Kitty. Don't worry. Continue. <laughs> No, no, no. Someone <laughs> unplugs the internet, not you. Uh, yes, the Zoe statue falls over and the modem dies. And uh, yeah. I think that's the only The way. Energizer guy falls over and yeah. hits the router. Because he's Couldn't. got a costume and he kicks Focus. his foot. <laughs> Retrospection. Retrospection. <laughs> Ain't that I miss, something. I love those interviews so much. They were, they were gold. I was actually Beautiful. thinking maybe there's a chance for like a Lisa Belveth angle again. But I remember when we saw, was it Gudo who picked Belveth into Chiefs? And yes. Chiefs yep. comp was just, we're ready for this. They did also you can't pick do a Corky thing. Vane with the Belveth. To be fair, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. Order said, look yeah. at us, we can't do a thing. And Chiefs <laughs> said, look at you, that's true, and won the game. Yeah. It was a little bit of poetic. Herald yeah. control. Bit, bit of a really grime. important. I'm a rapper. Are you switching? Not a rapper, sorry. Yeah, I reckon you should swap. Anyway, well, you guys do that. Fast. I'm chilling. I'm going to go uh, sit out the back because this <laughs> one's going to be a banger. Boys, settle down. You got the mic right now. It's champ select time. We'll see you after the game. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Get me off this couch. Get me into the game. Here we go. Peace up against the Chiefs, the one you want to watch because, well, the Chiefs still, the team undefeated. Can anybody really give them a fair shake? Well, Peace going to try. They've got first pick. Yes, they do. The question is where they choose to go with their first pick. We've saw Ezreal in the last game. Uh, note that we are on patch 12.12b, so some small touch-ups to a lot of champions, most of them still being banned. So that should be a fair indicator that the touch-ups haven't been nearly enough. Uh, is This is... I want to say that Corky mid is one of the most counterable first picks possible. Uh, it still can work depending on your jungle matchup, for sure, but Corky itself can absolutely be beaten. I think that is bold. You've been quite outspoken about this over the last few weeks, right? Praying that somebody's just going to lock in an Ignite as a summoner or somebody's going to play an Assassin and just dive them and say, you can't get it a laning phase, just coasting. But even other mage champions, like if you want to have permanent prior into a Corky, you can pick a Zero and just sure. like threaten pushing the wave and, and trading with him. Uh, ultimately, we don't always see that. Teams have identities. And I just think that a, a blind first pick Corky is no reason to be on the blue side. Right, like that is just innately a risk, and that to me is Peace saying we don't really know what to pick first. We just think that Corky's good, you know. So we just want something that we think is good. But the Chiefs now ball in their court, of course, they can return with something. I've been watching Wimbledon. I have. That's in my mind. Did you watched that final last yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. How good was that one? But Banger. let's not get too detracted from the big points here, because uh, that is now the sixth game in a row for Arthur on this Viego. He's kind of in love with this champion. He's a beast on it. He's really, really good when he pilots it. Has been played with pretty much anything, right? Swain, Corky, Lissandra is probably our most favoured, but would you really rate a Lissandra into a Corky? Lissandra's decent. It just means like, so Corky's one of those champions that can build a, a Maw or a Hex Drinker, right? Early. And get through some difficult lanes pretty yep. okay. Uh, but still, Lissandra can keep priority. Uh, this is, I think Peace have just kind of said Without looking at the Chiefs, the Chiefs don't matter. This is the comp we want. Let's lock in our comp. They've gone for the Jinx Corky. This is like bread and butter split one League of Legends right now in terms of draft coming out of them. All they need right now is like an aggressive jungler to get them to their scaling items and then a top laner to, to work nicely, ideally into a matchup being shown. Not always going to happen, but Chiefs have been kind enough to, to lock in the Nar into bands. If I was Peace, I'd be quietly hoping for a Gangplank. I think, be the number one choice to work with your comp. So Chiefs would obviously want to attack that one and take it away. I do wonder where it will go beyond that because we've seen Tian just say, I'm playing Shivana at all costs. Uh, Sejuani's already banned. I don't think that Shivana necessarily warrants a ban. Yeah, so maybe question what's next. Like, are we looking at like um, deep champion pools into the likes of Jace and, and Gwen? Yeah, Gwen, I guess. 
but Nar's okay, right? Like, Toppen's Nar in particular is good at almost everything. Like, if Tan plays Cannon, maybe you just chuck a Cannon out. Maybe Riven, because you don't want to deal with an Ignite Riven top laner. But I think that's too many cooks for Peace okay. in a composition. I think we might just end up with, like, a an Orn or a Shivana top lane from, from Tan with Lisa just playing facilitative, like, AD jungler. Go for the Camille, right? So some guaranteed lockdown that basically guarantees all the uptime in the world for those hyper carries and the Corky and Jinx to lay down their damage, right? So that makes sense. We can appreciate that one. Lissandra obviously banned away because it just seems ever too convenient there for the Chiefs. But what will their next ban be? I'm going to say Orn Trundle and then their comp's done for peace. So Lissandra's decent. They uh, ban Azir here, right? Yeah, oh, Azir is, I think Azir is 100% pickable by the Chiefs. So yeah, they're going to take that away. Good shout. Question is for Tally now, right? Like, what do you want to do? I don't think you go the TF pathway. I think you're you're pretty comfortable looking at an aggressive bot lane pick. How do we get priority in mid lane against this Corky? How do we, you know, assert that we are going to win? I think showing a jungler's hand is nice for maybe a stronger 2v2 for sure. Still plenty of options there for Tally. Man with about 60 champions in his pool. Lock it in, mid lane Choggers. Chogger. Take me back to 2020. Just Smash a rise. Yeah, just got drafted into the team and said, I don't play mid lane. What can I play that works in top that could work <laughs> here as well? And uh, he had a mid lane Orn, he had a mid lane Chogaf. He did it all, really. So why not? Bit of a blast to the past. They do need AP though, right? They definitely need some AP damage. Could be a Vega. I've certainly been a comfortable champion uh, for him in the last uh, few weeks gone by. The Poppy is going to be that flex pick that Tien's always had tucked up go. his sleeve. Okay, so it's... The reason that I would have liked Orn is because you have Jinx Corky to, to give items to, right? So like your scaling goes through the roof and Orn doesn't necessarily lose. Uh, most of his lanes will get pushed in. Poppy, Caesar, Rakan, Caesar, Viego, Zeri, of course, as well as Nah, all have dashes. Uh, I think, yeah, okay. So the Shivana is just going to be top lane like we said it would be. It's actually going to be a Poppy jungle. It is. So that has insane value into the composition of the Chiefs. And Poppy gets much more active around the map. I like that, honestly, from Peace. I just wonder... I just wonder how their composition functions when moving forwards. You can see a lot of hovers here from the Chiefs. That means their options do exist. Ari's a champion that we hadn't spoken about for a hot minute there, but still could have been picked. Certainly could have been, yeah. And here's your, your standard, I'm a boring mid laner matchup. Well, you wanted, from, from what I can see here, you wanted some kind of control, right, to try and prevent Peace from really running away with things, right? A Corky and a Jinx get excited, and if they don't have any CC to touch them, then you're certainly in in uh, confusion land. So Victor makes sense, obviously, with the stasis trap. Could have been the Vega, as I mentioned, with the cage as well, just to try and zone off key components. Um, but the Poppy's such a such a unique pick, right, that we have seen, as you mentioned, flex between top and jungle. I think the last time that really stands out to me would have been back in, what, split one, when Chan was playing, got the pentakill up against the yeah. Chiefs, right? Hit the, what was it? It was after playing Jarvan, and I think it just completely countered him out of the game. Yeah, I think so. There was a couple of really, that was a hectic game from memory. It was a really good game. Like a million Drake fights involved where yep. there's clutch Poppy ults, but it's neither here nor there for this one, I suppose. Uh, what we do have from the Chiefs is a couple of avenues to go forwards, right? Top in with Nah flanks, Rakan from Aladoric, who once again is on record saying, you should ban this from me or you lose. He's going to have the pick. The response from the Peace composition has been entirely about kiting, being long range, getting excited and playing rangers. Not about engage, not at all about engage. They can set up for objectives and use Poppy to, to have numbers advantages for sure. Shivana tends to, this, this tank Shivana build that we're seeing tends to ult before fights start just to control battlefields. And if Peace get a reset, they're in good stead. If they don't get that reset, Chiefs can run away with this game with just superior engage and team fighting uh, just because they can get the jump. And something that Peace can't do is that. Certainly can in terms of the ease of execution to try and find those initial picks or even just the fight as a whole. Chiefs are certainly well equipped with the champions locked in place. Peace, a ton of damage. But can they find an avenue on which they can actually afford to unleash? It's going to be a good game. It really is as we load into the Rift for that second game of the night. Once again, an undefeated Chiefs do battle with a piece that have changed around their parts one more time and are hoping that week six is when it all falls into place. Well, Babip joins us on the line from the side of Chiefs. And Babip, I have to ask, I mean, it's a bit of a bit of a throwback question for you, but this roster that you have at the moment, it's a it's a combination, right, of Legacy 2020 uh, and Peace 2021. So how would you rate this year's Chiefs in comparison? 
Um, I mean, any any uh, Ross Time influence sin is obviously gonna win. Um, but realistically, I think that it's gonna be interesting to see uh, like a world's performance because it's hard to kind of tell. But I think this is like the cleanest regular season that I've ever had That's compared to Legacy. I mean, it's very hard to say. Um, is is this like a question of like who's which one is better or just like just? Well, I suppose just like a, almost like a philosophical question, right? How have you found it? Yeah. Because I guess the question more goes to you were playing back then. Obviously, you've now, what, six weeks spent in the coaching position. So uh, the long, long winded question, I guess, becomes uh, how do you view it from a coaching perspective? But is there still that itch to ever go back to being a pro player? Um, I think becoming a coach is probably ha will have made me a better player. I do have an itch to play when I'm watching scrims all day. That's definitely still there, but I also enjoy um, taking like a step back and and analyzing from like a unbiased coaching point of view, and it makes me feel like I have a, a, a still like a huge impact on you know the direction of the team and stuff. So I I, I still enjoy both, and we'll just have to wait to see next year what I do. Yeah, no doubt. And I guess the question we can ask again when we do get closer to that playoffs for that potential world spot. Well, Bebe, bit of treat. Wish you boys the best of luck. Thank you very much. Well, shout out to that one, Rusty, into a two-man knockup there from Aladorg. A preemptive exhaust because Arthur's got the jump, he's got the flash, he's got those moves. Yeah, Guncrab actually using his flash there to perhaps try and block the Viego stun, but really flashes early, not reactively. Uh, and so it was a nice little play there by the side of the Chiefs. They'll get themselves a brilliant first blood in the lane that you would want it as well, because that is a Jinx and a Tom Kench that fall down with four summoner spells expended, Skimmy, and it goes from bad to worse for peace. Perfect start to this game for the Chiefs. And Aladoric has hit W twice so far in this game. He has hit a two-man W both of those times. I mean, the, there is some something in the water up in, in Brisbane here for the Chiefs, but these Rakan plays are just so clean coming out of him. Lisa now bot Scuttle. Very unlikely that he'd make a play given that Arthur is hovering. Jungler's just having a little bit of a break dance. Why not? He's got to certainly protect his bot lane, because as you mentioned, they have no summoners whatsoever. Raze and Eladoro, they still have their flashes intact, but don't feel threatened enough to actually burn them just yet. Even Tally, getting amongst the chaos right now. Zappi is stuck underneath his turret, farming a wave. All just a fight over a lonely crab. And they will manage to get themselves enough control to, to get a ward down towards the blue buff, but Lisa not willing to go any further. He does have priority in mid now. But the timing of the play was better from the Chiefs, and he's able to just disengage towards his blue buff. Smite was really being waited on. Bot lane looking to trade again. Oh, Raze is on. He's found the zap across the wall. That crit chance is just working wonders right now. Into Violet and make it a Duble. Michael Duble for his scoreline at 2 and 0. Oh. Really nice from the Chiefs, right? They get that first little gank out from Arthur. This time it's just a 2v2. Flashes, full confidence and full knowledge that Peace used all four summoner spells. So it is not a standard 2v2 lane. And while that felt like a pretty straightforward 2v2 kill, it is easier said than actually proven that the summoner spells basically are the reason. The Chiefs know their limits. They know exactly how much damage they can do. And an expertly done early game four and a half minutes into this one puts the bot lane specifically well and truly in the best possible place. That just feels written into the script, doesn't it? The fact that you've got Raze and Violet, heavyweights in their positions, going up against each other. That Gun Crab and Eladoric get to fight off in a supportive role, but then that that merged history of yeah. we were once together. Well, I mean, let's let's just quickly highlight that Aladoric has been a support for both of these bot laners of peace. Not just Violet, but he was also Gun Crab's support in 2019 on Avant. So they have got history with one another. You can see Rakan's, stat, his, uh, Rakan's stats here. Aladoric commanding. 0.5 deaths across four games is phenomenal for an engaged support. 85% kill participation speaks volumes in and of itself as a single stat. There's just no way. At some point, you have to have an answer. Normally, normally the answer to Rakan was Leona. A champion's in the bin, apparently. I haven't really seen one. He told me as much. I said, when are we going to see Leona again? He said, ah, the champion, uh, maybe maybe another time. I we'll had to wait for another patch. Yeah, it's just currently not that good. Uh, but it was one of the best answers to Rakan. So that's kind of opened the floodgates for Aladoric, you know? It doesn't mean that bot lane's going to be as, as difficult as perhaps it once was. If you ever tried engaging prior, Leona goes on your AD. And Leona is Rakan, but with damage. <laughs> this is what it always feels like if you're the AD copping it.
does at least I have a crack here. He's wrapping around, he's isn't he? Positioning. He's looking for it. He's got phase rush and flash. He's certainly got the moves to try and make uh, the pressure going towards Telly. He gets wall banged into the only spot on the map. Fantastic timing to pull the trigger there from Peace. The only option Tally had was to actually flash the initial dash out of Lisa, but doesn't react to it. Seems to be more focused on making the play forwards. Just gets completely smacked by the wraparound there of the Poppy. Chiefs will secure themselves the Drake, so they will continue to be a, a trade as it is. But that was really nice by Peace. That was giving them something. You know, this is, this is Lisa and Appy that we want to see more from. That's a good first step in that direction, albeit a scale and quiet comp from them. Still a very positive direction. It's only a great way for them to find a win or a lane to try and tailor their needs to. Even if bot lane has uh, got off to a fairly shaky start, those flashes will be up in just a moment's time, and then we can get to see what the likes of a Jinx and Time Kench can do in tandem together. Lisa is shredding here in the bot lane. Lisa also with a hex flash. Oh, Lisa. Could certainly be creative with his angles, but unable to try and deter Aladoric from jumping away to safety. Yeah, needed to, to pull off the miracle in timing there. It was a gamble, which is a little bit too late on it. Means that Aladoric will be okay. If that fails, there was always going to be the blast cone anyway. So there's plenty of tools there for the Rakan to get out with life intact. No flashes for raising Aladoric does mean 100%. You can put a focus on bottom lane and say Poppy should be able to look down here. But when your top laner is a Shivana that's not going to teleport in and provide much, uh, and your mid laner is a Corky, you do just kind of revolve the map around your Poppy. Wherever the Poppy goes is a point that we can focus. And until such a time, the Chiefs do just win by landing. This is two games in a row. It's kind of felt that way, particularly top lane, CS lead, bot lane, large advantage now in just landing. It certainly is. Even a cheeky invade like that where Lisa was primed and ready to contest. A little bit too slow with that hex flash across the wall. So blue buff denied, and another one to spawn on their side of the map that they can donate quite nicely across the tally. Hex flash is a really interesting choice for Lisa as well. I mean, I'm a big fan of hex flash. I think if you can afford in your rune page to go for that rune, it is broken. It means you can be so liberal with your use of flash. Dan doesn't actually get here in time. I stopped for a second there. The reason it's interesting for junglers is you can skirt around known vision really nicely. But in saying that, because it's time that you spend standing still, you need to have knowledge of their vision control, right? You need to be able to use it for a reason. So I saw a handful of games in the LCK this week where uh, ganks were happening towards the bot side. You were just jumping across walls, which just didn't seem possible. Yeah, like the, the thick wall bottom, you can hex flash over that one if you're pieces side of the map to, to get a gank off. It's actually very handy in what it can provide. Certainly reevaluate your options as to just how safe you are, even if you do have that vision control down. And fall into a, uh, a false sense of security. Really quiet start to this game now that lanes have simmered down. Chiefs have the lead. They're very happy to have a calm game to retain those advantages. Just get good resets off. Get those item spikes off. They've got a Herald to summon. Uh, and realistically, you want to break open bot, I feel like, to get Rakan and, and Zeri open on the map, ideally towards mid. Oh, they're onto Violet. He could be in a lot of trouble right now. The Lightning Crash comes out. Instant Exhaust is going to be cleansed as well from Raze, who was quite key. Lisa anticipating them walking just a fraction further forward. Drops down the hammer. Doesn't find a knockback. They just do so much damage. Arthur in the area. If Violet stops this base, he's doomed. Oh, Aladog, that was gorgeous. Just absolutely destroys Violet. You're not allowed to recall. Arthur wants a little bit more though. Lisa has no mana. There's the heartbreak. Gets flashed out of. And now Gun Crab will say, please stop diving us. And this, this is all no just, fun. It's just a cascade effect here by the Chiefs, right? Gank number one, bottom successful. Four summoners burned. 2v2 happens afterwards as a result of those summoners missing. And now they just get a health trade in what was essentially a 2v3 win. They got a Herald to summon and Herald in hand. And it's just going to result in the full turret. We said this is the lane they want to focus. I didn't expect them to go so crazy so quick. Just doing it through lanes. That turret's gone. Ray's putting in as much work as he can right now with that burst fire to get it to those two plates. There it is. Literally one more auto. Literally a mage minion could do it all right now. Just sidesteps the chompers and prevents peace from finding anything back. But... Not the reintroduction that Violet would have been hoping for. This is really awkward for Raze because he wants to reset. Probably has a full Mythic in his in his wallet right now, but doesn't want to leave the lane because that turret is legitimately 
one ranged minion auto attack off. So depending on how Peace played this one, he probably wants to stay. So just quietly, Aladoric, just one-shotting Violet with his ult combo there. Kind of insane. Seem personal. <laughs> he just saw an angle. Gunkrab could have played Vision a bit more passively there as well. Remember that if you're into a Rakan, Lease is probably the one that you want to go first on this Poppy. Because all of Rakan's abilities are dash based if he wants to get in or out of fights. Drake to be started. Raise freshly shopped though. Cocoon's not TPing in, Package. so this is going to be a fight as it stands right here. It's going to be a 4v4 until Tien rocks up. The hammer goes out, knocks off for away. The Drake will be secured here by Peace. One for one in this game. He's got nowhere to go though. He doesn't have a flash. It's still on cooldown, so don't trade that kill back quite nicely. Super Mega Death Rocker comes across the wall, and Tien literally bursts into life, gets gobbled up across the wall, and they're out. I don't know if that Tom Kenshot was on cooldown or not, but Lisa could have potentially have been eaten prior. Nevertheless, the Drake goes down. It's now one to one apiece. And the Drake also teleports in and ults into the fight to make sure they get themselves a kill. I mean, I think you take those if you're peace. you peace. You've really opened up something in the map for yourself, a point to fight over. And Appy's package also was very, very defensive. Doesn't cut off anything in reality. Guncrab 1 HP getting away from the Victor ultimate. Perhaps he just didn't want to get close, thought he'd die. Lisa also kiting away from him as Tien gets into the mix. Either way, Tien will get saved here in the back half of this fight and it just fizzles out. No intent from Peace to really contest beyond the Drake. Uh, and it's just Tien that gets in to find something nice. As soon as the hammer went down, they seemed pretty content to guarantee that one for free. As you mentioned, the corky package not being used to displace, but certainly to guarantee. The Poon is certainly laying down the law. That's a solo kill if I've ever seen one. Another one. We the best. <laughs> Top into too good. I mean, that is, again, it's a, it's a product of you make a play somewhere on the map, you have to respect your own lane. You know, you've just teleported, you've ghosted, you've ulted into the fight. You have to be fully aware that Top Rune got lane advantages. Has the full Mythic it's done there, engaging. It's on Rusty. That's a free man charm. That's gorgeous. Raise across the wall. Free damage. He's untouchable. He's now on a killing spree. He's 3-0. and oh. And Violet is just running out of answers. This might be the first Zeri that I've seen go towards the Kraken Slayer here in the LCO. Very aggressive itemization choice from Ray's. Not the Shield Bow Phantom Dancer, which is just the staple for Zeri. So much more about doing that damage. And it's every third Q, I believe, procs it in the same way. It's not every third bullet of a single Q. Just in case anyone was like, oh, that's broken. That would be broken. That, that, that would, would be, be extremely broken. Thank you, Rusty, for telling me not to type in chat. No typers. There was also a fight that happens, like, so deep into enemy territory, the outer turrets are still alive, Skimmy. Yeah. So, as Chiefs just really asserting themselves, saying blue buffs to play. Peace are illegal if they're in the area. They were in the area. And they were promptly punished. And it all started here with that 1v1, right? Tapoon with the Trinity Force had that huge item spike. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. You could actually just sit here and, it's like, this is a, a good team piece, right? A very good team that could, you could say, are contenders when they're in their top form. Chiefs already in Italian interview said this is a team to watch out for. Yeah. Just being dismantled by Chiefs who make it look fairly simple, who, like, overall, in terms of execution, make it look very straightforward. Almost proves the point that they all, they just can't be stopped. They just cannot be stopped. The Chiefs are just too good. But at the same time, he's picked a passive, scaling, ranged, finesse composition, which has a fair difficulty in execution in comparison to the Chiefs' comp. You've also given the Chiefs' Rakan. Maladoric is genuinely too good on the pick. Look at this, though. Rage has just been left on his island. I mean, he's been literally split-pushing the entire game. Not only is he so far ahead with items, he had, by a very fair margin, the most gold in the game. And nobody from Peace can actually go to shop, um, stop him down. I mean, you had to send at least three people, but then it exposes things like this mid-tier yeah. one. And Tapoon, once again, can threaten another solo kill bot. Shivana's ulting just to clear the wave top, right? Doesn't feel safe. Feels extremely threatened. And that was just a Viego hovering, playing zone defense to keep that Zeri alive. Zeri also very capable of going to side lanes. You'd remember, of course, the Bruiser build had Zeri top lane for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you saw some Zeris in mid. Uh, so this isn't the Bruiser build, but what that says is just like Vayne, Zeri is quite equipped to go into side lanes and is very difficult to actually kill when there. 
So I guess what we have to highlight here and what we really have to look towards is just how much of a lead can the Chiefs accrue for themselves before the point where a Corky can be overwhelming and a Jinx can get reset. And, and the reality is, it's a 0-4 Jinx with one item compared to two full items of raise. So a very long time is your answer. A very long time. So you got to invest some of that Hopium in for the long term. You cannot be uh, betting that one out anytime soon because it is very much Chief's favor. They're up by 5,000 gold at the 15 minute mark. A very commanding performance. And all we really see on the map right now is them pushing, shoving, and sieging. And being able to siege more than one lane, I do think is the best possible decision by the Chiefs. When you look at Peace, because Peace's composition, Corky can wave clear very easily. Jinx is okay at wave clear as well with the rocket auto attacks if you're able to allow that. And Peace are very much designed for the disengage, for keeping those two alive as they sit here and peel. And Shivana, of course, with the ultimate form, like you're seeing, constantly used. Very nice wave clear when you throw out that E. So, what I think Chiefs have done correctly is that when they're sieging, they're playing multiple lanes at once because then they can pivot from mid to a side lane and get a turret for it. It's like what you saw from Ray's top, uh, the inner turret being one hit after all. The Peace also doing a very similar thing right now, knowing the Drake is up. They just want money. Certainly do. No more so than that man right there, Violet, farming up a treat to try and go to the to, to try and hit that critical mass, that, that moment <laughs> where a hyper carry can say, maybe, just maybe it's now my time to really 1v9 and shine. You can tell Violet's been playing support in solo queue lately. 0-4 Jinx, 20 CS down, buys a control ward. That's such a support thing. I actually respect that quite a lot. The most AD carry thing to do, however, is to sell that to finish an item because you never placed it. Not much to place it for, to be perfectly honest. I was just going to say, where, where are you looking to really plant it at this stage? Aladoric currently was. Do you really want to entertain the idea of a fight? Because Lisa certainly could be. Looking for the wall bank. We're just going to pan away from that one. No need to see it, because Guncrab has devoured his AD carry. Sapoon could be in trouble, but can just literally hop across Whoa. the wall, as can Tien. Hello, surprise, surprise. Flame Breath on your head, underneath the turret. Sapoon needs to hit Mega. And there's the health boost that he so desperately required. And he's just going to channel the recall mid lane. Fire a good flash. Duncrab, though, could be in trouble instead. Raze pops the ultimate, but he's copping a turret shot. Ice gets across the wall. Corky package. No worry. Appy, what do you do here with this package? You try and be the hero. You don't have flash. Appy seeing montages in his mind. Chooses not to, though. I mean, there's there's worlds. I was wondering. Nine out of ten times, a Corky just has the package and has to int. It is written in the scriptures. That will be reserved this time around. That does mean, however, that that package is for actually nothing. Because there is actually nothing on the map. So is just going to use it to try and get priority, perhaps in a side lane, push out one extra wave more greedily, uh, because it is impossible to kill that Corky when you can package it max distance away. And going back to base, but I'm saying, Appy, it's about to expire. You need to use it in this next wave. That's if he wants to at all, yeah. Lisa protecting him. Guncrab also used Flash, I think, in that last skirmish. Either way, he was able to use his ultimate to keep Violet alive. Aladoric altered himself in that play. True. That is, that is a... All right, here's the question. Observer's having here's too much fun. Here's the question. <laughs> Did Lisa know that he had flash up? My because man just got caught in 4K. That, yeah, that is absolutely just exposing him. <laughs> Alternatively, he has a crimson chin and does not care about having flash because he has hex flash. And I respect that if that's the case. It happens to all of us. Every single one of us. Tempo jungling, right? Yeah, we'll call 20 it minutes tempo. in, sure. It's the hex flash tax. Of course. It is known. Gotta go fast. 8,000 gold lead. Huge performance here from Chiefs. We've just consumed every inch of this map from yeah, jungle casual. to lanes. Arthur ganks bottom once, has a 0 0 3 scoreline, but we've got an 8,000 gold lead. Topoon has one kill, it's a solo kill. Mid lane's just farming. He got involved in a play, but that's really because peace came to him. Bot just won. I mean, the Polyna Chief's just straight up hard smurf. 
There's something mesmerizing about the ability to have a comp, right, that has the damage, but also has the hard engage, so if you do have a lead, you can press it. I mean, how many times have we seen Tapoon pushing a wave? 1v4, and p we're not interested. You know, we just don't want to take that fight right now. They're buying their time. Maybe they can deny another dragon, or maybe they can see this next one in a minute and play for the soul point. They need time. Yeah, I mean, we could say that they're buying time, but it's been taxed extremely heavily by the Chief's government here. 8,000 gold is quite significant enough to be game winning. We'll see exactly how it is that the Chiefs get challenged here. Is there ever a way? Two items done for both carries of peace. Ideally, you'd want one more item of peace between them. Level 16 as well as Aladoric has actually oh. been grounded. Yeah, he's really knocked him up multiple times, making his life a little bit of a misery. Guncrab is just going to... See Miss Jungler spit him back out. There is the laser on top of his head, beaming him apart. Tally with a flash forward, lands the vector. Oh, that makes it look way. ever too easy with that double. Make it a triple. We're running everybody down. We want to try and ace this team without Appy even being there. And Tapoon is the final man on the coffin. And Appy just shows up late to the party, and the party's finished. Just going to clear mid wave, going to lose Baron and Drake simultaneously. Just doesn't get involved. I have to assume the teleport was ready for him during that fight, but it wasn't a real fight. I think it's crazy that Peace went for that at all. You see damage in the last team fight, non existent. The team goes forward just to secure a Rakan. I mean, it's nice, he got something, right? Similar to the last play, last skirmish around the Drake earlier. TN will ult in, he'll secure one. This is nice from Lisa. I also think that once you've grounded and you've done half health, the play's done. That ult is kind of pointless. Just press Q again. It's a very low cooldown. And let Aladoric get out with his life. But now you're playing into the hands of the Chiefs. You're violent in this situation. You're just depressed. There's just... Where there's, do you go? There's people everywhere. They're all dangerous. And then Tian, of course, no flash on the Shivana. Has Ghost, but can't Ghost away from a, a Nah that has hit you with the Q already. Thrown a building at your face and slowed you down. Well, cool, calm and collected seems to be the measure of this game here. 5k gold lead at 15 minutes, 10k gold lead now, 10 minutes later. Topoon has flash, so I feel like he could get a little bit antsy here and just want to make the play blind. But we'll be chill. Just going to hit mini now form, can auto attack turrets for free here. Regardless, Arthur just going to hover both lanes as they push. I'd be shocked if Peace actually find an opportunity to defend this. We'll be close to a corky package, surely in the next minute or so. 45 seconds. Yeah, it's certainly not going to line up for any major objective. It's going to have to be used for a base defense if this is Chiefs primed and ready to go for the win. Shrelia has been used there by Aladoric looking for that initial pick. One inhibitor is already down in that mid lane and they are certainly threatening that top lane too. They're all in on these two lanes because bot lane is nowhere near. This is also one of the most, like, if your piece you're so upset that bot lane lost because Chiefs can just build magic resistance. You've got a 0 5 jinx and magic resistance on everybody, which means no one does damage in this game. As you say, Force of Nature, Merc Trades, and Wit saying they've got the damage, they've got the resistances, and they've just got the raw mechanics to make it look this easy. That's Ray's finding another kill into Violet and really making his KDA look like a bit of a nightmare. Not even their own base is safe here. Peace gonna try, package is finally here. But it's a last ditch effort. Chiefs with absolutely no need to push any further than they have to. Oh, here you go. Lisa with flash forward. The package goes down, tries to zone him away. Can they find that one crucial kill? They can. It's a consolation prize removing Tally from the equation. There's a shutdown, but is it too little, too late? I think it is, Rusty. Tapoon is flashing on your head, chucking the building, as you quite rightly said. And there's a knock up. You can go golden, but you're going to go dead. There is the ace. 15 kills, 11 wins. Make it 12 as Chiefs still continue their impressive run. Next is shorter follow here for the Chiefs and for Peace. They will secure themselves a participation award in otherwise an absolute massacre and just chill. I mean, the face of Arthur says it all. Just another day on the rift for them. If all you have to do as a jungler is gank bot once and then the game ends, you're just living your best life as a jungler. That's an absolute dream. Why not? You just get to farm up a treat, realize that your team is not throwing any bit of uh, retaliation back at you. You're cruising. And I think that's really what we saw in that game. Then, Mac, it's just Chiefs cruising to the victory. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. It kind of, you know, 
we, we thought maybe there was a chance, maybe there were moments for Peace to get back in. You saw, you know, at least that gank on Tally at mid. Could have been an opening, but at the same time, look, a few more kills coming out at mid. Violet just couldn't get back in. They knew that he was the win condition. They stopped him from being the win condition. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Peace, what do you got? I think huh? they said you had. Did you have a nice holiday? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's back. what they were saying. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, Pete. hey Kitty. Oh, hi, everyone. Well, I, at least I'm not 0-5 on the couch, so <laughs> Violet's definitely having a worse time than me. Well, that was True. that was um, more one-sided than I was expecting. I was trying to give peace a lot, knowing that Violet was back, knowing that they were coming in off that win from last week. But they were just, yeah, it felt like the hive mind wasn't quite there. They had to give up a lot of objectives. They had to give up a lot of map control. They had to give up the game in the end because they had to give up too many things. And Chiefs are just too good at figuring out how to win these games from the get-go. I think Chiefs in the mid-game, yes, they win their early game, but their mid-game is so perfect because they're never just mindlessly farming like a lot of teams. They're not AFK. They're constantly doing things on the map. At one point, I believe Peace only had the top outer tower, mm. and Chiefs was able to take every single tower that is outside the base. So six towers to one. And it's just... Their macro game is just always so proactive and they are the only team that is this proactive because other teams kind of just lean towards scaling towards late game because that's an easier way to win. But I really want just, they're just the perfect team right now in terms of macro. It's just insane how good they are. I, I feel like even, even if Chiefs like didn't pick a late game comp and just played play in the early game, I, I still feel like just by the, the gold lead they have, even if they had a bad comp, like they'd still be able to hit him with their wallet, right? Yeah, and that's that's kind of what I'm saying as well. Is like they they can probably default to just a scaling comp if they get threatened anyway, right? Like they have the fallback of what everyone else is doing. Yeah. But they're so good at getting early leads, there's no reason to change it. Like what what we realistically need to see in this league is teams actually contest them early, to to either push the Chiefs into doing something different or to show us that they can do something different. Yeah. Because we would like to know before they go to Worlds with this trajectory. <laughs> that they can be challenged and actually adapt. Well, you did hear in that coach interview as well, Babbitt was already, you know, mentally at Worlds. At this point, it, it kind of felt like that, the way he was talking. So maybe maybe that will happen again, though. Look, another 25 and a bit minute game. Chiefs keeping them real short here and uh, keeping us on schedule, as expected. It's a magic number, isn't it? I just say every single time, sub 25 minutes, it's going to be a banger. It's going to be a, a beautiful occasion. I just feel like, for me, watching the Chiefs during the mid-game, it's a bit like National Geographic. You know, we're into the yeah. jungle, clear out oh, some course. camps, off we go to Rebaran. Hey, oh, it's a freebie, cool. Back to the lanes, oh, a bit of demolition derby, cool. Some turrets fall on down, I'll oh, just farm it again. True. I mean, it's literally everything you could want. The and, casting um, does get really National Geographic sometimes nice, when you're sort of just explaining, you know, slowly what's it's going on. It's got the binoculars out. We're like, oh, top lane, bot <laughs> lane, I'll have a turret. Oh, 10k gold lead, cool. Just looking from afar. Now, Kitty, I believe we have uh, some, some famous individual on the line. Do you know who that is? Yes, I do know. It's Quinn, which is also raised from that game. So congratulations on being 12-0. The Chiefs are just Thank you. the undefeated first for the current split. But um, I do want to talk about your build. We actually see Kraken on Zeri for, I believe it's maybe the first time in LCO. So do you want to elaborate on why you decided to build that? Um, before the game even begun, I fought about going Kraken. They had like quite a, comp a tanky comp with Shai, Fana, uh, Poppy, and Tom. And like after just getting like such a massive lead in early game, I knew it'd be like just I wouldn't be punished for building it. And it, it feels really strong. Like it makes the one item spike on Ziri like way stronger than when like opposed to going Shield Burst. So and it, it enables you to go to like more or Wits End, which are like really good MI items against their comp. So. I was mainly thinking about that. Yeah, very solid indeed. Now, uh, I did notice, look, I don't condone bullying ever, but there was a little bit of bullying going on in that bottom lane. Uh, was the wind condition just, you know, try to tilt Violet out of existence and stop him from doing his ultraviolet scaling thing? Yeah, we already had a plan to early gank bot. And, um, you know, after that was all we started with and it just like kept going from there so i i'm good friends with violet i feel pretty bad for like what happened to him this game but gotta do it yeah, it's competitive whatever works right whatever works yep. and i do want to just mention that you guys are kind of just the best macro team in the entire league right now so like max said if you guys were to beat chiefs where do you think you can start where do you think you can start if I was to beat myself, 
Um, just hope Leo drafts like pretty poorly, honestly. Just try Vidas and draft. I think that's not not like it's a weakness, but that would definitely be like where you could get the biggest advantage over us, uh, over us right? So, Very somewhere good. there. Well, congratulations. You at least leaked a little strategy. Tally, his lips yep. were sealed. Now, look, uh, we'll let you go. Enjoy the win. Enjoy the flawless, you know, LCO you. so far. Split two. Uh, see you later, Ace. See ya. Always good to chat. Now, uh, look, so, Rusty, you're right. Yeah. Beat him in draft. Do something different. Try to shake him up a little bit. Would be nice. Because uh, they're clearly unbeatable in game. So you have to throw a spanner into the works. You don't have to go like crazy cheese things. You don't have to pull out weird champions. But yeah. Beating them in draft could be saying that because they want to play early game so often. What if you're just, what if you just have bigger muscles early game? Yeah. What are they going to do? You puff up early yeah, game? Yeah, you just puff up your happen? chest and staunch them for the first 15 minutes. I figured yeah. it out, Mac. Yeah. You don't ban Lucian. <laughs> yep. Okay. So your Chiefs, you don't ban Lucian. You let the enemy team have Lucian. Okay. They play like it's LCK. They're drafting what? Gale falls into Rapid Fire Cannon. They're 1v9. Yep. They just absolutely double tap. Then Lucian Lamy. It looks ever so broken. You're like, oh, hang on a minute. We can do it in Os as well. Chiefs lose and everything goes back to normal again. But have you figured out who the Dare MVP is? Has Aladoric. to be the bot lane. I, I think it's Aladoric at the same time. There's no Rakan on planet Earth that should be able to hit two Ws in a row and hit a double knockup at level one. That is illegal, and so he has to be MVP. But how many people are going to complain if we don't give it to Race? I don't care. Okay, well, it was Aladoric. Congratulations. <laughs> Dare MVP of the day. I don't want to make Rusty angry, so Aladoric <laughs> gets it. True. 1, 2, and 12. Big KP as expected. Uh, not too much damage share, but at the same time, this man is he a zombie ward abuser still. 32. 32 wards in a 25, was it a 25 minute game? Yeah. Absolute nuts. I need to start learning from Chief Alley. That's 25, 52, mm -hmm. what does it all mean? I feel like, look, even though he does like always manage to work Zombie Ward in there, this man just places so many wards. He's a vision god, and this is why Chiefs are ahead of the game, right? I can kind of tell, okay, so I kind of mentioned that Aladorix Rakan should be a permaban against him because he's just too clean on it. Yep. But I did see the angle that Peace were kind of tackling Chiefs where they picked out the Poppy and it kind of uh, countered the Rakan. Also with the Tom Kenji, stop the charms and stuff. But maybe Ali is just too clean with his knockoffs. He did manage to just kill Violet before they even begin the dive by himself, which is nuts, without Ignite. But I just... What can the man not do on Rakan? He's, he's a charmer. He also oh. killed Violet that time as well, which was an interesting dive, interesting affair, yeah. but just a whole bunch going on in bot lane. And there's a whole bunch of games left, two to be exact, one of which is the match of the week. And that's coming up just after the break. Make sure you don't miss it. It's Order up against Direwolves just after this. Level 16 as well as Aladoric has actually oh. been grounded. Yeah, he's really knocked him up multiple times, making his life a little bit of a misery. Guncrab is just going to consume his jungler, spit him back out. There is the laser on top of his head, beaming him apart. Tally with a flash forward, lands the Vector. That oh, makes it look way. ever too easy with that double. Make it a triple. We're running everybody down. We want to try and ace this team without Appy even being there. Hey, look. Menu bomb. We there? Sure. <laughs> I just made something up on the Ready? spot real quick. Three, two, one, reveal. Do not be toxic. Don't be a lever, damn. Just get good Don't lol. Don't be a knob. <laughs> Don't I'm be like, a knob. Just get good lol. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, noob. Or just... They're not going to get the kill that they're after. Poltron still with the Ignite. Oh, no, they're going to find the kill anyway. Dante don't miss. Okay, Dante. Aggressively okay. dashing forward for the kill. He was like almost posturing that you can't catch me, but then he really felt himself. <laughs> Dante, you monster. Dante don't miss. It's a 4v5. Let's not forget, but they're winning right now. But they found the hook. They found the Twitch. And Limus is dead. He burnt the flash. He burnt the heal, but he didn't survive. And that's a big deal. Kanga still pressing forward a shutdown for Tien, but he's dead for 40 seconds. A flash forward as Fauna claims free. Now five and one. He wants the quad. He wants the ace. Hey. Oh, that is, uh oh. That's 
Uh oh. Oh my god, look at the damage. Primordial burst. Can they find the kill? Darshung must be feeling absolutely robbed. Bulldog right now, well, Dante. Dante. he's got the old charm, he's ready to jump in, knocks up two, Dante in trouble, flashing away, utilizing his range right now, level 15, so packs a bit of a punch, he's on towards Pathrise, who flashes forward, busts a shot away, it wasn't enough to protect Boyce him, has three Boyce kills. has found two, now he's found three, he's keen to find more, another flash away, he's on a... Knock him up once, knock him up twice, the food in trouble, but turns around with Tally who once again does a bit of a chicken dance on them, goes golden for a second, life leech going through absolutely crazy. Now it's a dance between who can do a little bit more Yuri. with their Swain cosplay. Yuri has stolen and he is marching forward. Makes you wonder what could have been if he was there from the get-go. Still looking. Onto Pappy. Appy jumps in with the Emperor Divide onto two. Papros with the self-cast of an ult, but he's been stunned. He can't auto-attack. He can't do much. He's just been collapsed by the true shot bros. Which player has the best fashion sense? That's easy, Ugh. bro. Nah. That's easy. I'd say Dante. Yeah. Which player tilts you the most personally? Oh, shit, I don't know why I was reading my one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who tilts me personally? Yeah, who tilts you the most personally? Which player? I'll say Dante. He getting caught on mid-wave and shit. <laughs> He'll go Dante. Who's the worst timber on your team? Who's the worst? Yeah, worst tempo. Worst tempo? No, temper. Temper. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> mm. That's easy, though. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> done. <it again. laughs> oh. no. Which player has the most soothing voice and would make a great song artist? We need some, you know what I'm saying? Shit, Will's hip hop shit, me. <laughs> But like, if it was like some nah. bullshit like jazz, maybe you shall play. You know what I'm saying? Jazz? Yeah, yeah that's my yeah. answer. Okay. Why are you, why are you questioning? That's no, my answer. No, respect, respect. Yeah.